Imagine standing on a vast open plain as a massive shaggy animal thunders past, shaking the ground with every step. Instinctively, you might say, that's a buffalo. But is it really? This single word has been used for centuries to describe some of the largest land animals on Earth, yet it hides a fascinating case of mistaken identity, cultural habit, and biological difference. The truth is, when people argue about bison versus buffalo, they're not just debating names. They're uncovering a story that stretches across continents, history books, and even language itself. So today, let's settle this once and for all by exploring what truly separates bison from buffalo and why the confusion still exists. Let's explore right here on History of Simple Things. To understand the difference, we first need to talk about what a bison actually is. The animal most people picture when they think of the American frontier is the American bison. This iconic creature once roamed North America in herds so massive they seemed endless, shaping entire ecosystems as they moved. Bison are unmistakable when you know what to look for. They have enormous shoulder humps made of muscle, thick shaggy fur around their heads and forequarters, and relatively short, curved horns. That hump isn't just for show, it's a powerful adaptation that helps bison plow through deep snow in winter to reach grass underneath. Their heavy coats allow them to survive brutal cold, making them perfectly suited for harsh northern climates. Now let's turn to what is scientifically considered a true buffalo. Despite the common use of the word, Buffalo are native not to North America, but to Africa and Asia. The African buffalo is a formidable animal known for its aggressive temperament and powerful build. Unlike bison, African buffalo lack a shoulder hump and have shorter, sleeker hair adapted to warmer climates. Their horns are one of their most defining features, often forming a solid boss across the forehead that curves outward and upward making them among the most dangerous animals on the African continent. These buffalo live in large, tightly bonded herds and are famous for their ability to defend one another against predators like lions. Then there's the Asian water buffalo, a species that has been intertwined with human civilization for thousands of years. Water buffalo are commonly seen in rice paddies, swamps, and muddy wetlands across Asia. Their wide, sweeping horns extend sideways rather than upward, and their bodies are built for endurance rather than speed. Unlike bison, water buffalo have sparse hair and rely on water and mud to cool themselves in hot climates. They've been domesticated extensively and remain essential to agriculture in many parts of the world, pulling plows, transporting goods, and providing milk and meat. So if bison and buffalo are so different, why does the confusion exist at all? The answer lies in history. When European explorers arrived in North America, they encountered bison for the first time. These explorers were already familiar with buffalo back home in Africa and Asia, and the large cow-like animals they saw on the plains reminded them of those creatures. As a result, they began calling bison buffalo, even though the animals were not scientifically related. The name stuck, passed down through generations, and became deeply embedded in culture, language, and even place names. This is why phrases like buffalo roaming the American plains or sports teams named after buffalo persist to this day. Technically, these references almost always point to bison, not true buffalo. Even famous cultural symbols like the buffalo nickel actually depict a bison. While scientists and biologists prefer precise terminology, everyday language tends to follow tradition 
and tradition is powerful. Over time, the word buffalo became less about scientific accuracy and more about identity, symbolism, and storytelling. Beyond names, bison and buffalo also behave differently. Bison are generally migratory grazers, constantly moving across grasslands and shaping the environment as they go. Their grazing patterns help fertilize soil and promote plant diversity. African buffalo, on the other hand, are more territorial and defensive, often standing their ground rather than fleeing. Water buffalo, shaped by domestication, display calmer temperaments and strong bonds with human handlers, though wild populations can still be unpredictable. Physically, the differences are just as striking when you compare them side by side. Bison appear top-heavy due to their massive shoulder hump with shorter hind legs and thick fur that gives them a rugged, almost prehistoric look. Buffalo appear more evenly proportioned, with smoother coats and horn structures that dominate their silhouettes. Climate plays a major role here. Bison evolved to survive snow and cold winds, while buffalo evolved to thrive in heat, wetlands, or savannas. So, which term should you use? If you're talking about the great animals that once thundered across North America, Bison is the correct scientific term. If you're referring to animals in Africa or Asia, buffalo is accurate. But language isn't always about being technically perfect. When people say buffalo in a cultural or historical context, they're usually understood to mean bison, and that shared understanding keeps the word alive. In the end, the debate between bison and buffalo isn't really a battle. It's a reminder of how history, exploration, and language shape the way we name the natural world. These animals may share a similar silhouette and an even more similar sense of power, but they come from different continents, evolved under different conditions, and play different roles in their ecosystems and cultures. Knowing the difference doesn't just make you more accurate, it deepens your appreciation for how diverse and fascinating our planet truly is. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.